Welcome to this, the seventh of eight videos on database design. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video we're going to be looking at this final stage of adding the fields. So far, we've found the objects in the second-hand bookshop example. We've made the links between the objects. We've made sure that all links are one-to-many. And we've seen how to add both primary keys and foreign keys. Now we're going to add the fields. We left the last video with this design. We had the objects at the top, and below are the tables that we're going to create from those objects. We'd added the primary keys and the foreign keys. Now it's just a matter of going through each table and seeing which other pieces of information we'd like to have. So let's look at the author table. Well there we're going to have the forename and surname of the author. That's fairly standard. Next, the author title. We're not going to add any more fields. That's an intersection entity, one of these special objects that is only there to make sure that we don't have a many-to-many. -many. So that doesn't take any more fields. It's just there to hold the foreign keys from the author and title tables. The title object will take the title and the publisher of that particular title. The title category doesn't need any more fields. Those have been supplied by the foreign keys from title and category just as we did before with author title. Now we can move on to category and that just needs one extra field, the category field. Then there's the book object. What do we need for book? Well, the edition, the price that we paid for it and the date on which we sold it, the date of sale. Those things need to be added to the book table. And finally what do we need for purchase? We need the seller name. We need the seller type. So, for example, was this a private sale or did we go to an auction? That sort of thing. We'd want the date we bought this purchase and the price that we paid. So these are now our full table definitions. We could almost move on to creating the tables, which is the subject of a different set of videos. This is now a properly normalised, fully relational database design. We have everything we need to turn this into a working database. And that we've done without any normalisation at all. And we've ended up in what is more or less fourth normal form. Way above the third normal form, we need to make relational databases work. In normalisation, we start with the pieces of information that we want to have and we rewrite this list time and again until we end up with third normal form. Here, there's no rewriting. All we've done is created a fully normalised relational database without any problems at all. The final video in this series will then look at what happens if we change our mind? How do we make changes?